Hey friends, today we are looking at ACCA, Paper Financial Management. We are looking at the March-June 2018 exam. We're looking at question 10. We are looking at business finance. We are looking at theoretical x rights share price. We are evaluating a decision to fund with debt or equity. Guys, let's jump in and get started. Here is the exam paper, March, June 2018. You can download this from the ACCA website. This question will also be in many of the question banks that are published by the wonderful publishers. We're doing question 10, 31. Okay, we're going to be doing requirement A in the spreadsheet. So before we go on, download this question open up the practice platform try this yourself at home then come back and watch the rest of this video let's compare how we did it I'm in the ACCA spreadsheet tool I'd like to remind you there are no marks for formatting there are no marks for financial modeling there are no marks for spreadsheet skills so we're going to keep things really simple we want to lay things out so the markers can find the figures that we come up with and so they can give us the own figure rule if we have some mistake somewhere. That means that the mistake that we make in step one will be assumed correct when we go to step two. That only happens when the marking team can follow what we're doing and they can see our workings. Okay, So the first thing we have to do is calculate the theoretical x rights share price. So why don't I make column A as my table of contents, so to speak. So that will be the TERP, okay? And I'm going to use a layout like I do on paper. When I practiced this at home, I learned it on paper, and it fits very nicely into the spreadsheet. So we can have the number of shares, we can have that value, and then we can get a total. We can have one row for the current, one row for that rights issue, and then in the bottom we can get that TERP. Okay? So we know that for every five shares, okay, with a market value of five, we get one with a discount of 20%. So that cell, the figure in cell D3 will be equal to the five multiplied by a zero. 0.8 to show the 20% coming off of that. Okay. Now, that total will be equal to the product of the number of shares times the value per share, that market price in that case. Okay. And bring that down. Okay. Now, we have to solve for x over here, don't we? And what's going to happen? I can underline that with a control U. That will be equal to the sum of these two. I could have done that mental math. Why not? I just did it with the spreadsheet function. I can go copy U. I can underline there. The marking team is going to know exactly what is happening here. So right under there, we can go the TERP is equal okay, to the 29 divided by the 6. Wasn't that easy with the spreadsheet tool, friends? Now there are no marks for spreadsheet skills or formatting. You could have parked all of that work in cell D4. That would have also been completely fine. The marking team will look into the cells to see your approach. Let's move to the next part. Okay, so we'll do parts two and three together. That's the revised earnings per share. All right, and we'll build two P&Ls to do that. We need one column for the equity, one column for the debt. And we can use a standard P&L that we know and love. So the top line will be the profit before interest and in tax that was given to us that we will multiply by 20%. 
Then we have our finance costs, which gives us our profit before tax. We can take out the tax at 22%. And we take out the tax and then we are at the profit after tax. And once we have profit after tax, <clears throat> if we divide by the number of ordinary shares, we can get the earnings per share under equity and debt financing, guys. Let's be professional and show the marker that we are working in some countries' dollars rounded to the thousands. There's no mark for that, guys, but let's be professional. I'm going to double click on this column separator to auto enlarge to the widest, widest item in that column. And what do we know about the profit? We know that it will grow 20%. So that will be the 1597 multiplied by the 1.2. Okay. And nothing will happen to our finance costs if we fund with equity. So we have the same item there. Profit before tax. I'll open up the sum function and just quickly grab those. Yes, I could have just done one plus one, but I'm a spreadsheet geek. I like to use functions. We know the tax rate, everybody, is 22%. So now I will multiply my profit before tax. That's C12 multiplied by a negative 0 0.22 to show the tax rate. And look at this, I can just copy paste that little function right there, copy, paste, and relative cell addressing, it will pick up the correct figure for me. Now, the number of shares, we need to do a quick working, and there's no rule about where to put the working. I'm gonna put it to the, to the right, because the spreadsheet is wider than it is longer. So now I can do a quick working. And we will just tell the marker exactly what we are looking at here. And that will be the number of new shares after TERP. After TERP, theoretical X rights share price. Okay, so that's going to be an equation. Guys, we had we have on our balance sheet a 200, 2,500 in equity, do we divide by $1 par value? That tells us the number of shares. And then we multiply that by six over five because five over five is one and we're adding one fifth more, one for every five. That's where the six over the five comes from. And we get 3000 shares over there. So number of new shares equals that number. Yes, I could have done all of that in that cell there. But let me show what, what the marker, what's, what I'm doing step by step, because there will be marks just for that one item. Okay, so the earnings per share will be profit after tax, okay, divided by number of shares. There we go. Now, let's go to the debt column. That will be equal to that. Finance costs, well, we're going to raise some new finance. Let's do another working for the increased finance costs when we issue the debt. So I'll make another working here. Working, I'm going to call that working one, and I'll renumber the one below it, and that will be the interest on new loan notes, okay? And that will be equal to the 20 thousand loan notes that we're issuing multiplied by $100 each multiplied by 8% interest 0 0.08 there we go that's a 160 so the finance costs will be equal to that minus that 160 okay and 475 now we can finish this up and save a whole lot of time with a tactical copy paste I grab the copy, I grab the paste, I change out the number of shares to the original number of shares, 250,000. And look at that, we have the EPS for funding debt, funding equity, and boy, it went fast, didn't it? There are no marks for formatting, as I've said over and over, but this is starting to look a little messy. It's hurting my eye. I'm gonna grab all of this. I'm gonna put it into a standard format that one doesn't work. We need two decimal places so we can get that earnings per share. And check that out. It's looking lovely. Bold these. 
no mark for that. This looks a bit nicer for us right now in this demo. Guys, that is completion of parts two and parts three made really easy in the spreadsheet tool. Let us go to part four. Following on to part four, we need to get the revised share price. That's going to be really easy. Again, with the spreadsheet, do we have an earnings per share? Yes, we do. Do we have a PE ratio? Yes, we do. That is 12.5. So all I have to do is multiply the C16 times 12.5. Copy, paste. Look at that. Wow. So much easier using the spreadsheet than doing this on paper. Marks are flying. Let's do the last part of this. They want us to use calculations and evaluate if we should use debt or equity to finance the expansion. So they ask us to use calculations. They gave us some clues about what we could calculate. I'm going to calculate the change in financial gearing. I'm going to calculate the interest cover and I'm going to calculate the capital gain. So let's use the same approach that we've been using. This is part five, the evaluation. We can do a column for the current situation. We can do a column for equity. We can do a column for debt. And how do we calculate financial gearing? Well, I take my debt. I take my equity. I put one over the other and I get my gearing. We can also calculate interest cover as a nice measure of financial risk. I cover, interest cover, the marketing team will understand that abbreviation. Last but not least, we can do a capital gain under each approach. Our current debt is for 500. Our current equity is equal to the equity and the retained earnings. That's 2,500 plus the 5488. Okay. Gearing is equal to one over the other, C21 over C22. Okay. And let's now do the revised situations. Okay. So under the equity approach, my debt line stays the same, and I will be adding to the equity, that five, that extra 500, okay? Because we went from 2,500 to 3,000 with the rights issue. So that's another 500. Okay. And we can copy paste that gearing. And if we fund under debt, that will be equal to the current debt plus 20 shares, 20, 20 loan notes, excuse me, times 100, and we get 6500. And under debt funding, the equity line stays the same, so that's going to be equal to C22. And we can just drag that over. Looking great. Okay. Now we can calculate the interest cover. <clears throat> so the current situation, I need to go back to my question paper and I see that my profit before interest and in tax is 1597. And I will put that over my finance cost, the 315. There we go. Interest cover is five. Now let's use the work we already did when we get the interest cover here. So if I zoom out, that line is going to be equal to my profit line over negative. I'm going to flip that negative to a positive. And with relative cell addressing, I go copy, I go paste, control C, control V. 
Look at that, making really quick work of the situation. Last but not least, okay, the capital gain. Okay, so under the equity option, capital gain will be equal to that revised share price minus the TERP. So we can come back upstairs, grab that TERP, and we get a 37 cents. Under debt, we will do the same thing. It will be equal to the new revised share price minus the $5 market price before we did this. And we get a 62 cent capital gain. Let's clean up our work with some standard formatting. Gearing is usually shown as a percentage. I can just put that to a percentage to one decimal place. That looks nicer. And we can put that to our standard two decimal places. That looks nice. Capital gain, same thing. We can just show that and in terms of cents. So we can put it to that standard formatting. No marks for that. Looks a bit nicer. Guys, last thing to do, a quick write-up here. If we look at these numbers, look at this. We get a nicer capital gain. So this is really just a trade-off of risk and return. And if we're prudent, let's go with the less risky option. Let's say that in simple English to the marker, and we can wrap this up. We see the increased capital gain under debt financing comes with a big increase in gearing. This means taking on more financial risk. Funding with equity might be the more prudent option for the shareholders. A comment there to wrap up our financial analysis in part five. Look at the beautiful exam technique, everybody. Working in the computer-based exams really does save a lot of time, makes our work easier, makes it neater, more presentable. I really like it. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please throw down a like and subscribe if you'd like to get more. This is Steve signing out for now. Good luck on your exams.